Music nostalgia is stupid. I'm a karaoke DJ. Week in and week out, I deal with Gen Zers and Millennials who come into the various bars I work at and sing their favorite songs, or at least songs they think other people will like. If you're between the ages of like 21 through 35, at some point in the night, you will probably end up singing one of these songs. Coming out of my cage and I've been doing just fine. I sign in with a heaven. You know, emo shit. But it's not just karaoke. I was walking out of a restaurant the other day and the killer's Mr. Brightside was playing and the hostess and several waitresses were belting that shit out as I was leaving. It's an epidemic. But outside of the hits that are at this point, sometimes more than 20 years old, are these people listening to anything else by these bands? No. No, they are not. If you hear a song and it takes you back to a happy place, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if your whole personality is based around bands that you listened to just because it reminds you of being a teenager, you have a problem. Consuming music just for nostalgia's sake is really stupid. Stick around. This is Dancing with Ghosts. Emo pop-up nights. Emo karaoke. Emo festivals. We are living in the golden years of Zoomers and Millennials wanting to relive their childhoods through the emo music genre. I, myself, am at the perfect age where emo music should really have affected me on a deep level. But I've said this many, many times in many videos. I never liked it. There was not much musicality to emo music. It was all about the relatable, depressive lyrics about breakups, self-loathing, boredom, and hating one's town. Well, I, I didn't really hate myself. I, I hated everybody else. The few times I was in relationships growing up and I did get broken up with, I turned to Rush's Moving Pictures album to get me through. I didn't particularly hate my city, and listening to emo made me bored, so... I just guess their lyrics didn't apply to me. But one would think that this music nostalgia would uh, apply to entire albums and perhaps motivate the individual emo kid to listen to the band's other songs or albums. But no, it really is a very specific time period between 2004 to 2007 where emo music peaked, the most beloved albums were produced, and where people's fondest memories lie. This is fucking crazy to me. Like, why were albums in this time period emblazoned as certified classics, yet everything that came after was completely lost to the trash bin of time? For instance, why is Panic at the Disco's I Write Sins Not Tragedies, their most beloved song, yet their 2016 hit Victorious, is never played, sung, or remembered? I get that Panic at the Disco were kind of sellouts by 2016 and were total radio darlings along with their cohorts in Fall Out Boy, but these records still did huge numbers and were still played on the radio all the time. And and yet, it's only their work from that one specific time period that is finally remembered. Music nostalgia is stupid. My Chemical Romance is probably the epitome of sacred emo bands. Yet when they tried to release new music in 2022 with their single, The Foundations of Decay... Nobody really cared. Granted, it was a shit mix. I don't know what they were thinking on a production level, but I digress. Paramore's 2023 album, This Is Why, sank like a lead balloon with fans. Granted, by this point, the band had so dramatically changed their sound that it most likely alienated most of their older fans who only liked their first two albums. And this is where music nostalgia really hurts the artist. You, as the artist, made something so salient and relatable at a time when a certain generation of teenagers' hormones were raging. It was the right place at the right time with the right music. But are you really even a music fan if you 
only listen to music that doesn't challenge you in any way and just gives you the warm and fuzzies? Or are you just a fucking filthy casual? I'm gonna go with the latter. And look, I know what you might be thinking, especially if you're a fan of this channel. Well, geez, Josh, you talk about old shit all the time. Music nostalgia is almost your brand. Now, see, I don't always come up with pre-planned responses to arguments that haven't even been started yet, but this time I have. You see, my channel is focusing on concepts like physical media, or albums that flopped in an interesting way, or my tier list videos. But the only way you can even make a tier list video is if you've listened to every single album that artist has done. Not just the one popular one that was around when you were starting to grow pubic hair. Also, Peter Gabriel is one of my favorite artists of all time. He put out a fantastic record last year called I.O. Sure, whenever I listen to his most popular album, So, I call back fond memories of driving to the mall with my best friend at the time, but it's by no means the reason I'm listening to the album. I think the music and the vocals are really good. Bottom line. When I hear Kokomo by the Beach Boys, yeah, yeah, I know, roll your eyes, Grandpa's here to tell stories, everybody, but no, whenever I hear Kokomo by the Beach Boys, I'm reminded of swimming in my cousin's pool by the river with those tiki torches all around and the smell of sunscreen. And it is a very fond memory, but that's not why I listen to Kokomo. I think the song is really good, you judgmental fuckers. Here I am again, pre-responding to the comment section. Anyway, I, I just can't really grasp the concept of only really liking something because it brings you back to a happier time, and that is your only use for that song or band. And let's talk about another thing. How the hell do these songs not get old and stale after the one millionth listen? I am convinced that many people do not possess whatever it is in the human brain that makes someone tired of something. I swear to God, anytime I'm hosting karaoke and the opening guitar arpeggio for Mr. Brightside kicks in, or the opening pizzicato strings for I Write Sins Not Tragedies kicks in. Everybody loses their fucking shit as though it's the first time they've ever heard that song in their entire life. Well, I guess that sentence doesn't really make sense there, does it? Because if it was the first time, they wouldn't really have a reaction to it because they don't really have any emotional baggage tied to the song yet. Alright, it's like the fifth time they've heard it. And on the fourth time, they had gotten laid while the song was playing in the background. So they have really, really fond memories of the song. There's a reason why I don't listen to a lot of my favorite albums. I don't want to get burnt the fuck out on them and not want to listen to them ever again. This is apparently a thing that most people do not experience in their brains, uh, but I sure as shit do. And, you know, I'm not saying that this whole thing is exclusive to emo music. God knows there's old biker dudes out there still rocking Steve Miller Band and the Eagles because it reminds them of getting a toothy blowjob behind the football stadium on a Friday night. But God, there's something about emo in particular that has aged like a fine fucking wine, apparently. I mean, admittedly, these songs don't sound dated, which I think is more of a commentary on the lack of good, new, innovative rock music since that time. But yeah, at all these pop-up emo nights, emo karaoke, whatever, it's like the same 40 songs that are played everywhere and everyone loses their shit every time and nobody ever gets tired of it. It's, it's insane. I don't know. Please, somebody explain so this, this phenomenon to me. I will be glad to have a rousing debate in the comments section about this. Uh, I think... This video clip here from All American Rejects kind of uh, shed some light on what I'm talking about. But until next time, have a good rest of your night. I'm 40 years old, man. You think I'm going to write music about fucking heartbreak in high school again? Um, that's different. There's, there's a world that's opened up for me, at least. Having a lived experience that wasn't just this fucking band on the road, um, that feels like there could be some something there, which to me is exciting and it's frightening and, and and also half the people that love this band don't fucking care to hear new music and there's all these things are real right um that's an interesting perspective because yeah. you're sitting on like you know seven million plus monthly listeners but the reality is like what you're saying is like people just listen they consume the back catalog sure numerous times a day yeah and you think about you think about your favorite band that's long gone or that's still around and you can still see them, but like, can you name their newest song? You know, probably nine times out of ten, you can't.